I know Peter O'Toole has said that uh, as uh, that his model was really David Lean, having worked with him. I'm wondering how much did you encourage or or sort of collaborate with him to be any sort of go between between yourself and the other actors? Because obviously his work with them is not just a matter of um, sharing the screen, but functioning as as helping steer what they what they did. Yeah, I, I encouraged him to go as far as he could and would, because Peter O'Toole, being the man and the actor that he is, wouldn't overstep the bounds that I consider sacred, and that is the communication between the director and the actor has a special place that he would never tread on because he's so knowledgeable. But what he could deliver in terms of help and support is invaluable, because particularly if he's working with them in the scene, and it's a matter of the communication and the rapport that's set up. There isn't an actor, certainly on this picture, that ever came in contact with him that doesn't relish it as one of the best times of their lives. Well, there's this moment in the movie where he goes up to Barbara Hershey's character and informs her in this very revealing this moment that that her her family is there and it and it sort of pushes her to a different place emotionally in this one moment. I'm wondering uh, if you have ever uh, or if you feel like that's a remotely appropriate way to motivate an actor to get them to a, to a place that you need them to get to, or if that is sort of a sort of dramatization of the way that filmmakers manipulate actors. It is a a dramatization of the way a filmmaker can manipulate actors, I feel it is not a sinful thing to do to aid in, in achieving that emotion or characterization. Uh, it's, it's a legitimate thing. It's not the way I usually work at all. It's only, in this case, it, it was an exceptional case. She was blocked. She couldn't get it on her own. Her parents were there, and he performed a, a very effective dirty trick to get her there. Uh, interesting, I had a conversation with Barbara about that before, while we were in general rehearsals on the film, <laughs> or probably just in, the, in a meeting between us, and she said, she very much approved of that. Later on in an interview, somebody asked her how she would feel if, if she were actually subjected to something. Like that. She said she would hate it because she feels it's her responsibility to be able to deliver the emotion herself and not be treated as a child. Uh, and then the conversation continued and she said, but she couldn't deliver it, and she had some very valuable help there, and she would probably curse him out all the way to the stage where she got her Academy Award and then thank him profusely. So she had mixed feelings on it, but they were basically pro. How much can, how much can you learn as a director from directing a movie where an actor plays a director? Because obviously, to a certain extent, he's offering an interpretation of either what he thinks a director should do or what a director does do. do, do can you learn anything from that? Uh, or did you? I can learn a lot from what Peter O'Toole does. He's a very special actor, but not in the sense of uh, imitating the style, because he had elected, as the script instructed him, to be a certain kind of director at that point. And it was a director who I invented in my head to portray that role, to accomplish a, 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 a purpose in the subplot of the picture. And uh, so although I am constantly enlightened by what Peter does, it wasn't in that particular area of proficiency. Well. Uh I think both this film and Freebie and the Bean, both, they have 
a real extensive use of these real locations um, where, and that involve, as you said, you use a lot of cameras, but they, but they seem to involve a lot of logistics. Right. Um, is that something in particular that you're drawn to creatively, or is that something that you feel like maybe as a component of that era of filmmaking was just sort of a necessity as a, uh, a skill set that you needed to have? No, I think it's, it's very much something I'm drawn to, and it's because I think it's what makes a good picture, the kind of films I like to see. The point is, my stories are usually very personal stories that involve relationships and a complex interaction of characters and their subplots. And they can seem confined, they can seem like headshot pictures if one keeps them small. They're taking place in a world uh, and if you include that world, the geography of the world and the current, the current events that are taking place, the philosophies that are prevalent at the time, it all reflects on the story, it makes it much realer because it's bouncing off that reality. Freebie and the Bean, we had selected the Super Bowl in San Francisco, and that gave us the chance to use the beauty that is San Francisco. I think it's the most photogenic city I've ever seen, uh, with all the old architecture next to the new, new, and you almost can't point out a camera without getting a great shot. So that becomes part of your story. The insanity of the Super Bowl becomes an underlying comedy element in the story. Everybody is in a hurry. Everything's overcrowded. There's no way of getting any place on time. It's all part of the feeling of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Well, Freebie and the Bean is one of my favorite movies. Oh, uh, right. And, and what, but what's what's really exciting about it is is how much of a sort of cacophony of action and, and comedy and drama and all this stuff it is. Uh, I was wondering, you know, how how tough is it? Or I guess how much in control is that? Was was the shooting of that movie? And how much, um, you know, was it sort of a little bit of seat of seat of your pants kind of thing? Because you watch these chase sequences where they're trucks are falling over, going through real cities, uh, city streets that are clearly populated with a lot of people and other cars and things like that. And you're like, did they just strap a camera on, the, on a car and follow the actors as they, you know, went through the city? Or how, how, do, how does stuff like that work? Because when we look at movies like that, or the Blues Brothers, we're, especially today where everything's so manicured and controlled, it's, it's really pretty shocking. I mean, it's exciting, but it's really shocking because you're like, I don't know how anybody could ever do that today. Well, you're right. There is a specific difference. Right now, everybody's using CGI. And the CGI, you imagine what you want on the screen, and then somebody draws it. And it's, I think it's a, it's a miracle to hand to a director the possibility of CGI, because you can put whatever is in your imagination on the screen. But it's not the style we were working in. Uh, it was very interesting because that was my first studio picture. And I had done a dozen other pictures with a crew that, and, a, and even a acting company that I had developed over the years. And I said to the studio, you're hiring me because I make good pictures cheap and you want me to do that for you. The way to accomplish that is to take my non-union crew and get them all into the union so I can use them for this film. And it fascinated one of the business affairs, business affairs guys. He said, OK, we'll try it. And we went to work on the IATSE and got lots of Kovacs and the entire crew into the union. So I had all my boys right there. We went on location away from the studio, and therefore were not controlled. And it was very much like shooting my teenage exploitation pictures, my 13-day pictures, but I had the time to do a good one. Hmm. 